the real moral of the story is there is no ultimate PC. With respect, General, you are wrong. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to be able to say, I have the fastest computer ever built, or anything close to that? Granted, it's a bit of a hollow accomplishment since it's the fastest Windows 98 computer ever built, but this machine took me almost two whole years to put together, so I want to talk about it. I do also want to preface that by saying that technically this is not quite the fastest machine I could have possibly built. And I'm going to get into that in just a moment because the first thing I want to talk about is the hardware. So let's get right into that now. When I set out to build this machine, I Honestly, didn't think it would take this long. I just thought, I'll get the parts, you know, order them on eBay, put the machine together, install Windows 98, and start installing some games. And that could not be further from the truth. I genuinely tried to leave no stone unturned with this machine, both in spending months on researching it and simply testing every alternative part. And the amount of bad hardware and just gremlins that I encountered was truly amazing. So I just want to quickly go over those because if anyone is going to make the absolutely maddening choice to follow my lead and build this thing, they should know what they're in for. And because I don't want to leave any stone unturned where someone can come and say, well, you should have done this and then you would have had no problems. I want to show that I tested everything. With that said, I do also want to lay some groundwork with how I built this machine. Namely, that everything running on it does in fact have working drivers. There are some people that have built machines using Intel Core i7 CPUs, but the system has no drivers and every expansion card is wired up to a PCI adapter. I wanted something authentic, something I could take to a LAN party and say, look, it's a machine, it runs as it would be designed to run. So with that said, let's kick off by talking about the motherboard that I picked for this machine. This is the Asus M2V. It's an AM2 Plus motherboard that came out in about 2007, and the VIA chipset on it is one of the very last to have official drivers for Windows 98. It's also the only full-size ATX motherboard that I could find, which was specifically chosen because I wanted to use as many expansion cards as I can for future projects with the 98 PC. That said, it does have some gremlins, namely the SATA ports, do not work with hard drives above 137 gigabytes because even though the standard LBA48 was invented in 2002, this motherboard just doesn't handle it. I guess Asus's engineers realized this because they actually added a second SATA controller from Marvell, which is featured up here on the back of the motherboard. However, the road to hell is of course paved with good intentions. This controller has a hardware level bug in it. This Marvell controller can handle both IDE and SATA hard drives. However, if there are no IDE hard drives connected and the driver attempts to scan for those disks, the chip will crash and take all those SATA drives with it. They will no longer be accessible until the chip is reset. This issue has actually been documented since 2008 in Linux as well, and was never patched, as the user Jeff just simply ignored the bug reports. So what does this mean? Well, I can't use 
windows of any version on this machine with the SATA 2 devices. Windows XP will not find any hard drives at all, nor will Windows Vista and even Windows 7. Only Linux is able to do it, and only if I very specifically explain to it not to connect to the IDE bus. One other issue is due to the sheer amount of hardware installed on the motherboard itself. If I enable the onboard Ethernet and audio, Windows 98 will no longer boot and will complain that there is not enough available memory simply because there is too much memory since I have 4 gig installed. The final error that this motherboard has is probably the least surprising. There is no power management available at all. Even though this machine reports that it can toggle between ACPI 1.0, 2.0, and 3.0, none of them work at all, either in 98 or even XP or Vista. Which simply means I have to leave the processor, an AMD Athlon 64 X2 6400 Plus, at its maximum 3.2 GHz, which consequently means the fan is always at 100%. I'm probably going to put a water cooler on it just because it is the loudest fan in the system. But since the CPU never goes over 50% load, because Windows 98 cannot use more than one CPU core, the whole system idles at 30 degrees and maxes out at about 33 degrees Celsius. The second issue I had, and this is the one that has probably added the most amount of time that it took me to finish this project, has been the graphics card. Originally, I was going to use the ATI Radeon X850 XT Platinum Edition. When I was designing this machine, it seemed like the perfect graphics card. It was both 10% faster in benchmarks than its companion, the GeForce 6800 Ultra. It had newer drivers with ATI's Catalyst 6.2 release. It supported the full DirectX 9.0C API versus DirectX 9.0B on the GeForce 6800 Ultra. And finally, unlike the 6800 Ultra, because it was not the fastest Power Mac G5 GPU ever made, the prices are several hundred dollars lower. But that was then, and now with the benefit of hindsight almost two years later, I can admit I hate these graphics cards. Of all the things that have held me up on this project, the Radeon X850 has got to have added at least a year. I realize for a lot of people, hate is a very strong word, especially for a piece of obsolete computer hardware. But the amount of suffering that I have gone through trying to get these cards to work it truly is the only word that I have for them. And I do want to emphasize cards, because I have gone through no less than eight of these horrible things. I don't know why they have such horrible quality issues, but I have bought these cards from Australia, France, Germany, Austria, even Russia, and they have all exhibited the same commonality of issues. The most common issue that affected about three or four of them was simply black screening. The system would not post, no matter what card I inserted them into, even my modern AMD Ryzen machine. For the cards that did work, they mostly exhibited these kind of issues. But even when I could get them to work, game compatibility for some reason was just complete trash. The only exception to this and this is the only game that would only run on the Radeon card, is Portal 1 from Valve. And to its credit, the four year older Radeon X850 at 1280 by 1024 was able to keep up a good 45 to 50 plus frames per second, even when I maxed out all of the graphics settings. The reason I bring this all up is purely so I can justify what graphics card I ended up using for this build. Some people may not know that NVIDIA actually made more than just the GeForce 6000 work on Windows 98. BFG, one of the third parties, actually had 
beta drivers for the GeForce 7000 and even potentially 8000 series graphics cards. So after sinking over $2,000 and a year of my life into buying these ATI Radeon cards unsuccessfully, I switched to the dark side. I picked up a GeForce 7800 just to see what would happen. The gray beards at websites like Vogons insisted this thing is absolutely useless, that no games will run under it. But that's not entirely true. That's not to say that the card was completely flawless. I did have to use Robert Lowe's 512 meg memory patch, as well as backport an older OpenGL DLL file from the 81.98 driver. But once I did that, everything seems to be working fine. The final piece of hardware that seems to defy convention was the Ethernet. I did not want to put a CD-ROM drive into the system and burn games like it's the 1990s. Mostly because I would have had to go through several dozen CDs and DVDs for all the games that I tested. One option that most other YouTubers seem to pick is to use an SD card and simply copy the game over to the hard drive. However, if you're using a disk ISO file, you'll run into problems because the FAT32 file system can handle files over 4 gig in size, and a DVD image is 4.37 gig. So instead of dealing with any of that, I decided to just use network storage. I would connect the Windows 98 PC to a NAS that could talk to it, and I could just directly run any kind of file that I needed on the 98 PC. Disk images, patches, whatever I needed. And of course, for the sake of being ultimate, I even put a gigabit network card in here. Just to put that in context for people who maybe weren't around back then, 100 megabit Ethernet was not standardized until 1995. Gigabit itself was not standardized until 1998, and even then required fiber and 64-bit PCI cards. These days, however, there's only two cards to choose from for gigabit in 98, and the answer to which card to pick is quite surprising. The two cards that work are the Intel Pro 1000 GT and the Realtek 8169. Conventional wisdom from most people that are familiar with things like network cards would be to use the Intel card. Realtek network cards are often considered to be mediocre at best. However, just like the other parts in this Windows 98 build, the real fact is stranger than fiction. To cut a long story short, the Intel card does not actually have true Windows 98 drivers. The driver that they supply is actually for MS-DOS and performs miserably. Even on this completely overkill machine with a 3.2 GHz CPU from 2008, I cannot get more than 3 megabytes a second out of the Intel card. Not only that, since it's a DOS driver, it does not support DMA. What that means is when you copy files, the entire computer will lock up until that file copy completes. You cannot even move the mouse cursor while it's going on. The Realtek card, on the other hand, will average about 30 megabytes a second if you use TCP Optimizer and set it to configure a 100 megabit or greater network. You can even bring it up to a whopping 80 megabytes a second in file copies. The one caveat to this optimization is that it does not affect Windows 98's network storage or SMB protocol. The network stack for that is simply so old that even with optimization, the best I could get out of it was 5 megabytes a second, which is still as fast as a 40 times CD-ROM drive, so there was no issue installing games over the network with this. The rest of the hardware I chose for this build is pretty mundane and not really noteworthy. We have two 120GB SSDs. The only exceptional part about these hard drives being that they're connected with StarTech SATA to ID adapters, because that is the only adapter that has a chip that properly negotiates UDMA for fast hard drive access. So these SSDs are able to max out 
the ATA bus, which is something I'll demonstrate in more detail when I start showing this machine playing games. For sound, we have an Autogy 2ZS from Creative, a lovely silver early 2000s gamer PC case from friend of the channel Arik on Twitter, and finally, something that everyone is either going to comment on or has already commented on, a CRT that I paid way too much money for. But honestly, I'm just happy to keep RePC in business so I can pick up these weird oddities. And for those of you that have been with me for the last 15 minutes, congratulations. We're now done with the hardware. Now I can briefly talk about the software that holds all of this madness together. Play this installation disc backwards. Rise from the dead in the name of Satan. Talking about what software I used on Windows 98 for this build is a bit awkward because it seems like no two people on Earth will ever agree about how to handle a Windows 98 machine. There are people out there who, for some reason or another, believe that it should never be updated. Just install it, install the games you want to run, and drivers for them, and go. Then there are the people at the other end of the spectrum who augment Windows 98 with not only the software it came with, but software that was never even conceived of back when the operating system was relevant. Unsurprisingly, I fall completely into the latter camp for this project especially. I'm not going to offer any opinions on either side of the fence, I'm just going to list the software that I used. The first bundle of software was the unofficial Windows 98 Service Pack version 366. I say bundle because this thing contains about 30 different pieces of software. In no particular order, it includes every update for Windows 98, as well as files from even newer versions of Windows that have been backported to it, DirectX 9.0c, hard disk DMA patches, performance tweaks for systems with high amounts of memory, and the icon set from Windows ME, which just looks nicer because it has higher color depth. As mentioned earlier in the video, I am also using the 82.69 unofficial drivers from BFG. And the final piece of the puzzle is a very interesting piece of software called Kernel EX. This is probably both the most interesting and most controversial piece of software that I get to use in this project. Basically it adds some minimal functionality for programs that were built to run on Windows 2000, XP, or Vista. It doesn't run a lot of programs, and I mostly used it to fake programs out into thinking they were on Windows XP rather than Windows 98, and provide minimal extra functionality that they may need to launch. And that is the final piece of software I had to use to modify Windows 98 for this project. Everything else is just regular drivers from the vendor. So with that, we can finally move on to talking about the video games. Where the video games? Also, I just want to quickly apologize in advance. Everything here was recorded using a phone pointed at the CRT, because recording old 90s and 2000s PC games is really difficult. I did try to record everything I could at 124 by 768 at 100 hertz so I could remove as much shutter flicker as I could. The first game on the list is Star Wars Empire at War, released by Petroglyph Games in 2006. This game does not normally support Windows 98, however if you launch it with Kernel EX, it does take some time, but once it loads, it plays flawlessly. who rules this galaxy. Remove their influence from the system by destroying all their defenses. 
The next game on the test list was Fantasy Star Online Blue Burst, released in June 2005. This game was actually suggested by Discord user Mel as they run their own private server of the game and wanted me to test it out. Unfortunately, streaming the game over Discord as well as recording to disc for OBS was just too much for my laptop to handle, so the audio is a bit flaky. It, it, it's, it's really janky software. I'll let you know when it's up. Okay. Is there no mouse? No, keyboard only. Oh, okay. Now let's head off the inevitable question of, can it run Doom, though? Yes, it can run Doom. In fact, it can run 2004's Doom 3, which never actually supported Windows 98. Welcome to Mars City, Union Aerospace's premier research facility. To expedite your processing, please proceed directly to reception. Welcome to Mars, Marie. I'm gonna need you to step on one of those red squares on the floor for a bio scan. One of the more difficult games to get running, of all things, is Command and Conquer Generals and its expansion pack, Zero Hour. Not because these games weren't designed for Windows 98, they came out in 2003 and fully supported it. However, time has not been kind to these games, and the no CD patches that float around don't work on most versions of the game, you need to really hunt down a version that works, or don't do what I did and actually play it with the CD in the drive. Going back in time to 1998's System Shock 2, even older games on this newer hardware work perfectly. to proceed to the street level recruitment. This next request is Jane's FA18 from December of 1999, requested by a YouTube commenter on part 0 of the 98 PC video that I uploaded over a year ago. Unfortunately, what this game is about has not aged very well in 2022. So, I just want to be clear, I picked this out before global events happened, as you'll now see. Economic conditions in Russia are deteriorating at a rapid pace since the collapse of the Russian banking system. There are significant worries among officials in the international community. The Russian communist rallies and animations have been increasing the streets the streets by the thousands to protest current economic conditions. The Ivanovara was strong condemnation of Russian presidents. I'm gonna get demonetized for this, holy shit. <laughs> Gosh. I'm gonna get demonetized for that. Oh my god. It appears that no! Oh god, never that. Never. Oh god. Uh. Oh, it keeps moving up. B. Oh no. Inbound mother. One, three, one, three. Mile. Angel. Seven. Eight. Twenty. 
This next game, The Sins 2, is an interesting case of a game that started out working on Windows 98, but very quickly dropped it as a supported operating system. From what I could tell in my testing, the base game works fine. Universities, the first expansion pack, also works fine. I could not test Nightlife as I could not find a working patch to run it without a CD. And everything after Open for Business just does not load at all. Come on, baby, you can do it. Oh. Oh, come on. Five minutes later. I don't know if it's frozen or if it's just struggling to load. Oh. The next game I wanted to try was World of Warcraft. The vanilla version of the game dropped support in patch 1.11, released way back in 2006. However, with some kernel EX tweaks, you can get the final 2008 build of Burning Crusade running. Wrath of the Lich King does not seem to work, however, unfortunately. I know that's going to probably be the current expansion by the time people are watching this video, but when I started testing this, Burning Crusade Classic was not even yet out. That's how long I've been working on this specific video for. For nearly 7,000 years, the High Elves cultivated a shining, magical kingdom, hidden deep within the forests of northern Norderon. But five years... Cool. All right, let's fix up these video options. Everything maxed out. I don't know why it's locked to 50 frames a second, but... Our enemies will fall. It's a little sluggish. We will have justice. This next game surely needs no introduction. It's Halo for PC. I don't have anything really interesting to add about this game, other than, unlike Matt KC's build, this one actually works quite flawlessly. Good to see you, Master Chief. Things aren't going well. Tana did her best, but we never really had a chance. A dozen Covenant Superior battleships against a single Halcyon class cruiser. With those odds, I'm content with three. Make that four, okay? Complete well? No thanks to your driving, yes. So you did this thing. SimCity 3000 is another one of those games that doesn't really max out the 98 PC, but does run perfectly, and, I mean, it's a Maxis game. What kind of PC gamer in the 90s and 2000s wasn't playing Maxis games at least some of the time? However, it does exhibit some weird glitching issues on the menu, which I have documented here on video. Yeah, I don't know why it does that. Does it work in the game, though? This isn't exactly a game demonstration, but it does show Portal 1 trying to play on the third Radeon X850 that I purchased since moving to the United States in January of this year. I just wanted to leave it in to reinforce what I said earlier in the video about that these things are completely unreliable. 
another game for the meme list of games. It can't quite run Crisis, but it can run the first game in the Cry Engine series, Far Cry 1. This game is interesting because it was one of the very first games that came out as a 64-bit game way back in 2004 for Windows XP 64-bit edition. However, while this game does run, and runs quite well, surprisingly, there is one fatal flaw. There is no mouse control for some reason when I go into the game itself. So, uh, for some reason I can't move the mouse? Like, what? Is there... Nope. Huh. I don't know, is this just part of the tutorial or is the game just broken? The Sims 1 is a game that is notoriously difficult to get running on modern versions of Windows because the engine that underpins it is extremely unstable and fan projects such as FreeSO have abandoned making a single-player open-source engine of the game. However, even on Windows 98, this game does not run perfectly. If I run it in 800 by 600 mode, it runs fine. I can play the game, it's a great time. However, if I launch the game at its 1024 by 768 mode, it will instantly freeze as soon as it brings up this loading screen. So as much as I love The Sims 1, it does not work, even on period-correct hardware. One of the more surprising titles I was able to run on this machine is Grand Theft Auto San Andreas from 2005. However, anyone who has played GTA, any of them before GTA 5 will tell you, Rockstar primarily focused all their development energy on one console and then simply farmed out the ports, half-assed them to everything else. So, the Xbox version, the PC version especially, are very lackluster. The PC version of San Andreas in particular runs at 25 frames per second for some reason, and there is no easy way to increase that without fan patches that don't work on Windows 98 because it's simply too old. The game is fully playable, and everything works with all the graphics settings turned up to maximum. However, it just looks very choppy in-game. One fun feature, however, is due to using the StarTech SSDs, the load time is effectively instantaneous. For the record, this game does run properly, it's just for some reason the PC port runs at 25 frames a second. So it just looks really bad on a 100 hertz or 100 frames a second monitor. It's literally running at a quarter of the speed of the monitor. So it's just really jittery. Wall Street. Oh. At least it was before I fucked everything up. Sim Coaster, also known as Theme Park World, is a game that came out in 2001 as a sort of swan song for Bullfrog before EA happened, and is another one of the games that just does not run well on modern operating systems. But on the Windows 98 PC, like everything else so far, it is flawless. Move the blueprint to the required location and oh. Oh. The final game I want to showcase this machine running is the venerable Quake 3 Arena. Because not only does it run, it runs impossibly fast.
Did you catch all of that? Here it is running again, except I remembered to check the FPS counter afterwards to show how fast it went. Admittedly, it's a bit blurry, but when I zoom in, we can see it ran at a whopping 419.6 frames per second. In benchmarking with an OSSC for HDMI capture, it has gone as high as 470 frames per second, which I'll demonstrate in a follow-up video later on. What do we learn, Palmer? I don't know, sir. I don't fucking know either. I guess we learned not to do it again. When I originally set out to build this monstrosity of a machine, I just wanted to prove it could be done and that Matt Casey's machine was built through a lack of understanding of what he was up against more than anything. At no point did I imagine that this machine would have consumed two years of my life to build, that I would have taken it literally across the planet with me to continue it when I moved forward with my career professionally. But more than anything, I'm happy with this machine. It's a bit like having a DeLorean with a jet engine attached to the back of it. It's an absolute piece of junk that can break the sound barrier. And something about driving it is just oddly pleasurable and on a day-to-day -day basis. Every game that I have tried with this machine, with the exception of Age of Empires 1, has run perfectly. The only thing it cannot do is it cannot run DOS games due to the removal of the VESA BIOS extensions by NVIDIA. But DOS games don't require a machine that's so far misplaced from its appropriate time period to run. Truly though, I am just happy with what I've built. That I've demonstrated what you can actually do, even with the absolute trash fire that is Windows 98. And even on this machine, Windows 98 is still Windows 98. Sometimes it will boot up and immediately just freeze for no good reason. Applications will completely crash the entire operating system. The hard disk and registry have corrupted themselves more than once. And the laundry list of hardware issues still remain. It's Windows 98 for better and worse. But as I brave the last of Seattle's heat waves, there's something just very zen about being able to go down into my basement, boot up Civilization 3, and just spend my entire weekend away playing it. I don't have to think about the world around me, I don't have to pick up a phone, I don't have to look at text messages or Facebook, I can just be in the moment and enjoy some games. Beyond that, this machine gives me a grounding to do so many other projects. Things involving Wi-Fi, a dial-up modem, even another operating system like Linux are now possible with this machine. Matt Casey said at the start of the video that there is no Ultimate 98 PC. I would say that that is technically incorrect, although it is a hell of a time building one, it is extremely satisfying in ways I can barely describe, and I would absolutely recommend it to anyone that is truly into retro computing. If you made it through all almost 40 minutes of this video, then I salute you. And all I can do now is ask that you do the usual like, comment, subscribe, maybe join the Discord or follow me on Twitter. Because if there's one thing I enjoy, it is cursed computer projects. And if you do too, you're going to love what I've got lined up after this.